If you're translating in your head, then you know that's a frustrating way to speak English. But the good news is there are concrete things you can do and practice to stop translating in your head and start thinking in English. In this video, we're going to use the holiday of Valentine's Day, and we're going to give you tips and strategies to start thinking in English, stop translating in your head, and increase fluency speaking English. As always, if you like this video or you learn something new, please like and subscribe with notifications and come back here next Tuesday for our next video. Today we're going to take you through two steps in training your mind to think in English. The first step is simple, naming objects in English, just one word descriptions. Then you'll see short videos that you'll describe in sentences in your head in English only. And as we go, we're going to go over how to keep your mind in English. So clear your mind, take a breath. You'll see an image with an outline of an object for a couple of seconds. There's plenty of time to name the object if you know it in English, just say it in your head. If you don't know it, no worries. We're going to go over everything at the end of the video. It's a simple exercise, but when you put yourself in the English mindset and let your mind go to English first, it builds that habit of your mind to think in English when you need it in conversation. So you'll see a photo and there'll be different objects circled in it. You'll see each one for three seconds, relax, and put your mind in the English mindset. Think of the English word. If you don't know it, just wait for the next slide. Let me show you what I mean. See the picture, think the word in English. When you saw this, did you think strawberry? Or maybe you even know this would be called a chocolate covered strawberry. What circled here? Did you think bowl? And do you know this word? Did you think of stem? If you ever see something and you don't know what the word is, see if you can think of a word that describes it like small or green, or even a related word like plant, but just try to keep your mind in English. At the end, we'll go over the words so you'll learn them if you don't already know them. So here are a few more images with circled objects. Take a breath, ready? You're going to think in English. Is your mind going in English? One of the things I like about this exercise is that you can do it anytime, anywhere, because it's all in your head. You can be at work. Take 30 seconds to name things around you in English or to think through sentences describing your environment or what you'll do next. Thinking in English is effective English practice. We'll go over some possible answers for those pictures at the end of the video. Now we're going to watch some video clips. Then you'll have 10 seconds in your head to describe what you've seen in English. If that's too much for you, just name objects, actions, 
adjectives. Let me show you an example of the kind of clip you'll see. How do I look? Oh, um, I don't care. <laughs> These are all from the Friends Valentine's episode from season one. So you might think, Joey's holding a knife. Or maybe you can go deeper. Joey's looking at his reflection in a knife. Or Joey's worried about how he looks. Maybe you describe his clothing. He's wearing a turtleneck and a jacket. Or maybe you describe the setting. They're in a restaurant, it's busy. And if you feel overwhelmed, just make it simple. Don't try to think a sentence. Just think a word like plate, knife, or a very simple sentence like there's a plate or there are two people. So you'll see the scene, then you'll have 10 seconds to describe in English what you saw. You can just think it in your head. Here are five scenes in a row. There are no wrong answers. Just think in English whatever comes to mind. How do we end up with these jerks? We're good people. I don't know. I think we're like some kind of magnets. I know I am. That's why I can't wear a digital watch. <laughs>
Some firefighters are at the apartment. They're in full uniform with hats. Monica and Rachel are a little embarrassed. One of the firefighters is holding a clipboard and pen. Phoebe's sitting on the couch. Of course, there are a hundred different sentences you can come up with for any of these scenes. If you find you really needed a word that you didn't know in English, then go ahead and look it up. Watch the video again and think your sentence with the new word. Do it again tomorrow and the next day. I bet you won't forget that word. Let's go on now to the photos. A box of chocolates. This, along with roses, is the most classic Valentine's Day gift. You might have even said a heart-shaped box. Okay, it's making me very hungry looking at this. Here, roses, the other classic gift. Petal. Cake. Wow, that's a really pretty cake. Frosting. Or you might hear it called icing, but icing is a little different. It's usually thinner and stiffer whereas frosting is usually fluffy like this. Cake stand, straws, candy, or maybe you said heart. Jar, this kind of jar is a mason jar. Wrapper with a silent W. Here I was trying to get you to think the color pink, but maybe you said background or wall. If any of these slides were hard, hopefully this one was easier for you. Blue, green, orange, purple, yellow. Do you know this kind of bird in English? Flamingo. Feather. For this, maybe you said heart, or maybe you said engraving. Lock. Fence. Cookies. Now, these cookies have icing. Thinner, harder, different from the frosting on the cake. Mmm, I'd eat that cookie. Doily. This is a paper doily, and they're popular for making valentines or cards to share with others. But this is a real doily. This one was made by one of my ancestors, a great-great-grandmother, or maybe a great-great-aunt, probably 100 to 120 years ago, but they're used to decorate flat surfaces, like you might put a lamp or something on top of a doily that's on a table. It's pretty, isn't it? Mug, handle, whipped cream. If you've seen my video on ED endings, then you know why we drop the ED ending in the pronunciation and just say whipped cream even though it's spelled with an ED ending. If you haven't seen it and you wanna know why, then click here for that video. The more you train your mind to think in English, the faster you're going to be able to express yourself in English, and that's gonna make you more confident, speaking English, engaging in conversation. If you haven't already seen it, check out this video that goes over other tips, things you can do every day to get you thinking in English more and more. If you've seen that one, then keep learning now with this video. I also have a bunch of courses in my online school, Rachel's English Academy, where you can train to take your English communication skills to the next level. Check it out at rachelsenglishacademy.com. And don't forget to subscribe. I make new videos every Tuesday. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.